Yo, Snake, I finished laundering that real gun you picked up just now. Knock yourself out. It's on the house. Thanks. Time for another bedtime story, Snake. This one's about crying wolf. You don't need me to tell you there's whole nations in Africa tearing themselves apart in the name of ethnic cleansing. Well, she was born into that environment. When she was a little girl, her village was attacked by rival armed factions. Her parents and siblings were slaughtered, and she was left a refugee. She took her last surviving relative, her baby brother, and ran as far as she could away from the war zone. One day, 
they came across an enemy unit. So she took her brother and hid in an abandoned shack. And then her brother started to cry. She knew that if the soldiers heard the noise, they would find them and kill them both. So she wrapped her hand as tight as she could around his mouth. As the footsteps gradually went away, she came back to her senses. Her brother wasn't crying anymore. Horrified, she pulled her hand away, covered in sweat and spit. He wasn't breathing. They say wolves eat their own pups when they die. She was spotted wandering through the thick of battle, carrying her dead brother in her arms. She had visions, too. A wolf walking alongside her. Every night, the wolf would howl and cry, just like her brother did that day. Eventually... She made it to a government-run refugee camp. But by then, her brother's body had rotted away. The camp was crowded with refugees like herself, and little children like her brother. Day and night, she was tormented by the cries of babies. The wolf that followed her heard her sorrowful screams and answered. He made his way around the camp, and one by one, he silenced the children. She tried to stop it, but she was powerless to stop the wolf. A few days passed, and on the eve of the enemy's raid, there wasn't a child left. The adults who survived were torn up pretty bad. Of course, there was never any wolf in that camp. She was the one who killed those babies. But she couldn't bring herself to admit it. She couldn't bear the thought of herself going from one baby to the next, howling like a wolf, snuffing out their little lives. And she never did, even as Crying Wolf, a lonely beast forever stalking the battlefield. Snake, fighting with you made Wolf finally accept what she'd done. She was cleansed by you. If the cries she heard of children on the battlefield have been silenced, it's because of you. You ought to be proud. Three down, one to go. All that's left is Mantis. But you should know, Snake. She's been controlling all the other beasts. She's the beast of beasts. Don't let her get her hooks in you. I won't. See you around, Snake. Hold it, Snake. Time to change the disc. I know, I know, it's a pain. But you need to swap disc one for disc two. You see the disc labeled two? Uh, no. Huh? Oh, wait. We're on PlayStation 3. It's a Blu-ray disc. Dual layered, too. No need to swap. Damn it, Otacon. Get a grip. <laughs> yeah, what an age we live in, huh, Snake? Wonder what they'll think of next. Otacon, how do I get this door open? It's not opening? That's weird. I know I disengaged security back at the lab. 
We should have been able to get to Rex's storage hangar from here. I've got it. If memory serves, there are casting and rolling facilities directly beneath the furnace. You should be able to pass through them to a drainage duct that leads to the hangar. How do I get there? There should be a special service elevator in the northwest corner of this floor. Northwest corner. Got it. <laughs> 